What is going on my fellow nerds operator otter here and today we're going to be discussing the leveling guide for the necromancer and season four now i have this little doc page here and this will be in the description below and it'll have these little tabs at the bottom we'll be going over each of those and each of the builds that are going to be pertinent to the necromancer but the first thing that we need to discuss is the general leveling strategy for all classes in diablo 4 for season four now it's going to change a little bit because one of the big changes that Blizzard made was that they opened the Helltide to World Tier 1 and World Tier 2. And on top of that, they added this little progression bar mechanic to the Helltides that when you start grouping with a bunch of people, starts to chain react out of control. Now, Rob, being the absolute goat that he is, actually tested this leveling strategy with 12 people because 12 is the number that you want. After you get above that, people start disintuating out of the server because the server can hold like 12 people in an area. So what he he did was he grabbed three groups of people all groups are four players maxed each and they went through the helltide and they tested this and this is a two hour video i will leave this in the description below as well and it just shows the power of what's going on with this mechanic so let's actually talk about what the mechanic is so we're going to take a little detour into the powerpoint here so what happens here is that let's say that this is how everybody starts out in the helltide at level one this is your progression bar it's got three little bars here and as you start killing monsters, the progression bar is going to fill. And after about 10 minutes, this is what we're just going to create as an example of what everyone's progression bar is going to be. So player one has been killing a bunch of stuff. Player six found a really cool aspect or wanted to put on some really cool gear. So he kind of fell behind a little bit, whatever. Like everyone's going to be all over the place with this progression bar. But this is still the basic concept of what I'm trying to get down. This is what progression bars are kind of going to look like across the party. Okay, so now after 10 minutes, we keep going. Player one procs this. And what happens is, is that on each of these little bars that you see right here, this is when it's going to spawn an elite pack. So it's slowly going to disintegrate, uh, reduce, and as it uh, hits each of those bars, it's going to spawn an elite pack. And then when it reaches the very end, it's going to spawn a Hellborn, which is a little mini boss that you can or choose to kill or not to kill. Uh, they're pretty tanky. So in the beginning of the game, they're kind of hard to kill. And Rob shows that in his video. That's up to you guys. But... The idea is that as he's spawning these elite packs, these elite packs are going to feed progression into the rest of the party's bars. And so now, after his bar depletes, this is the new progression outlook. Oh, now player two has gone up and now spawns their elite packs and feeds progression, which then goes into three, which then goes into four, which goes into five, which goes into six, which will go back into one, which goes into two, which goes into three, and it chain reacts. And you just sit there endlessly spawning elite packs over and over and over and over and over again. It's absolutely busted. It is the most insane leveling progression we have ever seen. And on top of this, you're getting all of these cinders, and then you can go open the chest and get a bunch of xp from that as well because they buffed how much the chests are giving xp so this is like the basic strategy that you're going to use when leveling for season four which is super strong so if you are curious about how that leveling strategy works out and what all of that is here is rob's leveling guide right which is kind of what we're going to use i'm going to have that in my doc as well this is the original i kind of copy pasted it and kind of made a little bit of changes in terms of the wording and what was going on but it's basically the same thing so if you want the original og of like who designed this leveling guide this is rob so go give him a follow go subscribe to him absolutely wonderful content creator very very smart always has a reputation for being just one of the best out there so make sure you give him a follow and a subscribe all right, so let's actually talk about the leveling route instructions. So in the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to create your new seasonal character and you're going to skip the campaign. And you're going to select world tier two. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go start the seasonal quest line and you're going to get to the part where the iron wolves you get you gain iron wolves reputation by doing the hell tide. Now, we have no idea how long this is going to take, maybe 15 minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe 30 minutes. We don't know. It could be the very first quest. It could be the very last quest. We don't know. But you definitely want to get to the point where you're going to start gaining reputation from doing the hell tide. That is something you do know that we want to do. So we're kind of averaging it around how much time this is going to take. And as we are doing this quest line, we want to loot an herb bundle so that when we go back to town to go to the iron wolves and turn into quest we can also go to the alchemist and we can craft a precision elixir to give ourselves five percent multiplicative more xp and then that's when all of us are going to go into the hell tide all right so this is the time expected to complete each activity this is the total time that's going to be on here and you can see you know like you know unless you're like super optimal is like 10 and a half hours and like 
not the super optimal is like 12 and a half, but regardless, it's under 24 hours, you should be level 100, right? So that's gonna be crazy. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna start the Helltide and the optimal strat is to be in three groups of four to stack the Helltide bars. And then you can use multiple discords for this. So you can use the Sanctuary Discord. I know for sure they're gonna be having groups there. And the Sanctuary Discord kind of looks like this. So here's Sanctuary and you can go here and there's just a bunch of like groups. You just go down to the LFG finder and you'll go to LFG, probably gonna be here. The uh, Softcore looking for group hell tides for season. Softcore seasonal looking for group hell tides is probably where everyone's going to be doing this. So that's where I would look and just start trying to enter groups and get into that. Okay. Or what you can do is you can go into Rob's Discord and you can use that as well. He has this on his strategy as well for his document. So join the Discord, you self assign your role, you go into the channels and you can do that. You can also go into my channel. Now, this one isn't updated yet. We will update this by tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but stay tuned. I will put out a big announcement for everyone. It'll be here to get yourselves a role or to like, it'll give you instructions as to whether or not you want to join a group. So if any of you are watching this and you want to come in and you want to play with otter uh, or play with anybody who's going to be doing that hey come on in and put in a request we'll get you in the group and we can all level together okay uh, but we're gonna have multiple channels to do that so trying to give you as many uh sources or resources i should say to, to get into a group and to do this okay and then what you're going to do is you're just going to stay together remember you guys stay close together and if you don't know what that looks like this is why you want to watch this video this is what it needs to look like uh, if you veer off things don't work out well. So really watch this. You'll see why it's really important to stay grouped and just work together on this, okay? And then at the very end of the, the hell tide, when you have like five, like four or five minutes left, you start spreading out and you just start opening up all the chests. And they buffed how long it takes to actually open the chest. They shorten the duration by quite a bit. So you're not gonna get stuck with all of this stuff that's spawning around you. Make sure you use your teammates to CC things so that you guys can open the chest together. So if you got two necromancers, make sure you go up one necromancer, uh, cast corpse tendrils to lock him down. That guy opens his chest. Once he opens his chest, he goes out, he casts his corpse tendrils, he locks things down and the other guy can open in the chest just make it efficient and start being a team player right that's kind of what we want to do all right during the five minutes of hell tide that you're down now you're going to go do your your class quest so go get your golem uh you're going to go salvage your gear you're going to go import aspects into your codex uh, by salvaging them you're going to min max your gear you're going to do whatever you need to do within that five minutes of downtime that's why that five minutes of downtime for hell tide exists go do the stuff in town remember the town is lava be quick know what you're going to do have it pre-planned be quick all right. And you're just going to repeat this until you are level 35 to 45. Now, 35 is going to be for the ultra tryhard boys. 45 is going to be pretty easy and accessible for everyone. I know for myself, when I try to do this at 35, it is, I don't know, it feels like it's a waste of time, to be honest. I would rather spend the extra 10 to 15 minutes to get to level 40 and then just have a breeze through the capstone. So I like doing mine between 39 and 41. I know it's not as efficient in terms of super elitist boy, but I'm not trying to go for rank one, 100 this season. I'm trying to enjoy my time a little bit. So I'm going to do mine probably around 39 to 41, depending on how things go. All right. So then the next step that you're gonna do is you're going to enter world tier three and you're just gonna do the same thing as you've been doing. You're gonna group up, but now you're gonna add temp rings and you're gonna upgrade your gear to three out of four. You're not gonna be upgraded to four out of four or anything like that because of the fact that, um, or by upgrading gear, I mean like roll, like like aspect roll or uh, affect roll, right? You're not gonna be able to do any master working because you're gonna need stuff from the pits. So by upgrading gear, what I'm saying is, hey, go roll some affixes and stuff, get your, your rolls a little bit better and you're gonna temper your gear. You can do that as well. All right. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you're level 55 to 65, and then you're gonna do the capstone for World Tier 4. If you decide to do the capstone at level 55, good luck. Um, that one's gonna be a hard one. Uh, but hey, if you can do it, you can do it. The most important thing that we can do here is we're gonna go over to our jeweler and we're gonna craft as many rubies as we can, and we're going to import those rubies into our jewelry. So if you find jewelry with sockets, keep it. And I don't know if we're gonna have the materials to socket our gear, because usually that comes from the world boss, but if we do, you gotta socket rubies into your gear. Uh, and if you can, temper fire resistance into your armor. You're gonna need fire resistance for the boss, okay? So make sure that you get fire resistance so that you can actually complete this and it's not so much of a struggle. And then after you're done that, you're just gonna go back to the hell tide until you're level 70 to 75. Now, once you're level 70 to level 75, you're gonna make a choice. You can either go to Nightmare Dungeons with a group and you can split form, split form and start upgrading your glyphs. Uh, by upgrading your glyphs and getting your glyphs, you're gonna become much more powerful because, you know, 
seven glyphs that each give you 10% multiplicative damage is literally going to give you like two and a half times damage. It's going to be pretty insane, and that will make your hell tide much more efficient. But at the same time, Nightmare Dungeons are not going to be giving you as much XP with the hell tides because the hell tides give you the profane hell cages, which increase the monster level by 10, which will give you the maximum amount of XP. And you're going to be consistently spawning multiple elites over and over and over and over again, and you have a group to CC and lock things down with all of your AoE. And in Nightmare Dungeons, everything gets bumped up by 400% health. In Hell Tides, they don't. So you have 12 times, you have three times as many people against a monster that will have four times less health. So Hell Tides are still probably going to be the best way to level, and you're probably going to get to level 100 faster if you just stick in the Hell Tide, but you're not going to have glyphs. So your sacrifice is, I'm going to get to level 100, and then I'm going to go do Nightmare Dungeons, or I'm going to do Nightmare Dungeons, and then, hey, I'm going to go back to Helltide and start doing some optimal farming for some materials and stuff, because Nightmare Dungeons aren't good for materials, Helltides are. Or you can focus on a swap. You can you can go between both of them. I can be like, oh, I'm going to go do some Nightmare Dungeons now, and now I'm going to go do this. Whatever your group decides, make sure that you, you, you talk amongst each other to do that, because your group will be a group of 12, and you're all going to be in the Discord channel. So make sure that's good. Okay, so that is the strategy, right? Going into... Um, Hell tides and what we're what we're gonna do. Now, what we want to do is talk about the leveling uh, build. So there is a dominant leveling build for necromancers. There is a build that is literally just the best at leveling, and this is the blood surge minion build. This is absolutely for all for every single season I've tried. This build has just absolutely dominated. Now, because they're pumping minions and the corpse generation that we get from the minions, this becomes even stronger. They also have buffed uh, one of the skills for Blood Surge being Supernatural Blood Surge. They buffed it. So we don't need to run Paranormal Blood Surge to get these overpowers. We can actually just run Supernatural Blood Surge and just get a ton of damage uh, from the fact that we're always gonna be fortified because we're gonna be running Necrotic Carapace and we're gonna have Drain Vitality. So this is gonna be a super, super strong build. And what I have here is all of the skills that you're going to be leveling in order. So this is your starting. This is the green is when you enter the game and you reclaim all of your Paragon point or your, your Renown points to get your skills. This is going to be the very first thing that you're going to do. And then from here, this is everything that you're going to be doing. It has extra instructions and the skills that you're going to be upgrading. Once you're level 25, there's going to be a bit of a switch uh, in how we're going to do things. So uh, from here, we're going to be swapping out the corpse explosion for Golem and uh, swapping out blood mist for corpse tendrils and stuff like that, because now we have the points for it. Uh, we're also going to get our skeletal warrior, skeletal mages, and Golem uh, upgrades. I know those are at specific levels. Those aren't at like 25, but just know that these are the things that we're going to get as you're leveling up. And then you're going to do this with your skill tree and kind of refund it. So at level 25, you're going to have kind of a shift in how you're going to like build the build. And then from here, you just have everything that's going on. Now, I know that like swapping out and looking at this can be a little bit uh weird to look at so i gave another form that you can do so in leveling one through 50 here's your skills so you can go here you can open this up this is going to open up a d4 builds because d4 builds has a leveling path so here you go here's your leveling path right this is exactly what you're going to upgrade as you're going down it has all the lists right here to tell you and then when you get to level 25 right here i know it says 35 you're getting 10 points from claiming all your renown right so this is going to be level 25 this is where you're refunding the points just like we said right here so you're refunding these points and then you're going to put in the new points and then you're just going to continue leveling up all the way through. Fantastic, right? Makes it easy. And then for the actual build itself, what are you, what aspects are you looking for? Uh, this is going to be the build. So this is the Blood Surge minion build that we're going to be utilizing. One of the changes is that we're not using hemorrhage. We're actually going to use decompose. Why are we using decompose? Uh, because it creates corpses for us, which is really good for a race skeleton. But the other thing is look at the very bottom one. Decompose slows enemies by 50%. When decompose explodes, you gain 30% movement speed. Necromancers are super slow. So being able to pop this and now I have 30% movement speed for five seconds is so valuable. It's gonna be really, really good. And then on top of that, we're also going to have Death's Advance, which is going to help us move faster as well. So Necromancers are actually gonna move pretty quick now uh, because of this. So that's gonna be really good. Uh, we're also going to be running something that's a little awkward in this build. We're gonna be running 30% basic attack speed skill. This is going to do nothing to modify the damage or the proc rate of Decompose. But what it does do, amazingly enough, is it actually Actually buffs the essence regeneration so this says 10 essence per second when you put this in it it actually gets to 13 and being able to spawn essence is going to be really important against a boss it's not going to be super important against aoe and we'll talk about why here in a second but then we're also going to use this one when decompose explodes you're going to gain 40 essence so when you're against mini bosses or you're against bosses in the hell tide when you're against the capstone dungeon uh, and you cannot use iron maiden 
This is how we're getting all of our essence back in the actual like health hide. You cast Iron Maiden, it refills all your essence. You go through a blood surge cycle and then you cast Iron Maiden, all the new enemies that spawn and you redo it. And that's how you're getting your essence back. But what happens when you're against a single target? Because once you Iron Maiden the target once, you can't Iron Maiden it again for another 10 seconds and it's only gonna give you five essence. Well, if you sit here and you spawn decompose against the boss, you're getting 40 essence when decompose explodes and you're increasing your essence regeneration here. You're gonna re regain your essence so fast that you can go through a blood surge cycle while your minions are just doing minion things because they have insane scaling with your with your with your kit which is going to be awesome and you'll have each of the aspects here that are really important make sure that you're casting ray skeleton to get blood getters because this double dips it's really really good make sure to use that uh basic skills are now also going to give us damage reduction we're going to be using decompose and so now i'm only getting damage reduction by casting it we're going to get movement speed by casting it and we're going to get a bunch of essence regeneration from casting it so i think this is going to be a really good really really good leveling build uh probably the top one going into season four so that's going to be there all right so now you're level 50 uh now you're going to go into a choice okay you can choose two builds that i think are going to be absolutely dominant for leveling which is going to be the shadow summoner or bombardier now in order to run either of those you're going to need for bombardier splintering aspect aspect of grasping veins and howl from below you're going to need those three if you don't have those three bombardier won't work for the shadow summoner you're going to need blighted aspect and you're going to need uh, aspect of the damned at first you're going to shift that aspect once you hit level 70 but you're going to want aspect of the damned and blighted because your mages are going to be dealing a lot of damage and your mages are going to be shadow uh, so you're going to use your shadow mages to basically go out and do a lot of damage for that time until you're level 70 and then you'll get an aspect switch which we will talk about okay so once you're there all, all you need to do here is you can go let's say hey i want to do bombardier so you choose bombardier this is your choice uh i have put in all of the temper effects all the things that you need this is the build that's going on right here but even cooler if we go into the paragon this is what your level 100 works but look at this i have made it so that it goes into every single one now the one thing i will say that i was too lazy to change because i'm crunched on time here is when you go to the last point board this first board it's supposed to be exhumation all the other boards are going to put this as sacrificial it's not sacrificial it's exhumation please please don't make that mistake do not run sacrificial if you're running minions okay you want to run exhumation because that's going to fortify you and it's going to give you a lot of damage reduction with a buff of 10 percent damage reduction to 15 percent damage reduction so please do that all right this is essentially the whole thing. This this just gives you it out to you, all right? And basically, it's it's working the way that Bombardier worked in the past. We are going to be... Uh, the, the sacrifices here are not right. Uh, don't mind that. I will fix that before I post this video. <laughs> the sacrifices are not correct. This will be updated, okay? So the sacrifices that we're going to be running are going to be Reapers. And it's going to be this corpse one so that we actually have a bunch of corpses to spawn. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running bone mages that actually can cast our bone splitters. And then we're going to be running iron gong. So here you go. It's fixed. All right. Update that real quick. Okay. So what happens is, is that your reapers go out. They create a bunch of corpses. You're casting bone spirit. That creates a lot of corpses. You're running iron maiden. That's going to give you your essence back as well. Uh, and then essentially uh, against a single target, your your corp, your your uh reapers are just going to spawn the corpses for you so you don't need to really worry about that and uh your mages are also casting bone spears to give more corpse generation and then you're just going to use howl from below and corpse explosion go go out and boom you have corpse explosion ranks here if you get a black river because you decide to do durial pretty early fantastic if you get a black river because you're just the luckiest son of a gun that ever lived good on you use black river because it's going to make your corpse explosions even bigger it's going to be really good and if you do do that you can always just go into the build guides that i have and you can go into the actual bombardier setup that we have here and this is the actual bombardier build that you can start working towards the leveling necro for that is just a little bit different but it's there for you uh, to actually have. All right, and then the other one that we have is the Shadow Summoner. So this is credit to Vega. If you do not know who Vega is, Vega is the biggest dickus of necromancers. He's the rank one necromancer in pretty much everything. Uh, dude literally is just built different, all right? We refer to him as God in the necro community because he's just insane. This is his build. That's gonna be from level 70 onwards. Uh, this is his Shadow Summoner build. So you can go ahead and take a look at it. Essentially, the idea of this is that... Uh, we're going to be using Reapers so that we can cast our Ray Skeleton. This is going to go into our Blood Getters. Uh, we're going to be using Shadow Mages, and we're going to be using Blood Golem. And essentially, with Blight and the Shadow Mages, we are going to proc our Blighted Aspect. Our Blighted Aspect plus our Army of the Dead multipliers are going to be insane to just one-shot any boss or any type of like challenging enemy. We're going to have a lot of uh, cooldown reduction so that uh, our Army
Army of the Dead has a pretty low cooldown. Uh, because of the uptime of Blighted, we're also going to have that online as well. Uh, we're going to be using Decrepify and all of the like hit chance that we have with this is going to reduce the cooldowns of everything. It's going to be functioning really, really well. And it's also pretty tanky. Now, one of the uh, most important stats for both of these builds is going to be all res. Uh, all res and armor are going to be really important. So if we look at our defensive, you see our armor. 9,800 is really good. Uh, in this version of the build, we do not need to run Juggernauts because we need other aspects in this. So we actually need to run more armor in the build. Uh, but for our resistances, having resistance to all resistance in our actual gear is going to be insanely important because our Paragon board isn't far enough along to where we get all of the all res, nor do we have all of the intelligence to affect our all res. So we're going to need all res in the gear. So make sure that as you're building this, that you get a lot of all res. And for the Bombardier build, which is a little bit different. We are not going to be running a bunch of armor in this build. If you look at my defensives, uh, my armor is only like 5,000, but what we are going to be running is Juggernauts. That'll put us at the armor cap immediately. And then we're going to be running the same thing where we have a bunch of all res into everything. So we're going to be running uh, diamonds here and here and here. So let me go ahead and do that real quick and update this real fast. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, save, and you can see that we're like almost maxed out on our resistances. So it's kind of running the same idea. You really want max resistances to survive those hell tides and not have to worry about dying because if any of you have gone into, you know, hell tides at level 60, it's not a good experience. Uh, 60 to 70 is a rough time in World Tier 4. So making sure that you are able to survive is a very important aspect. So those are both the uh, guides. These are all of the things that you can have and kind of look into it and uh, get going with that. This is how we're going to level. Like I said in the Discord, we will be updating this very soon, talking about the actual Discord channels and getting everybody in to do a Helltide group. So stay tuned for that. That will be in the description below for the link to that. Other than that, have yourselves a wonderful day. If you want to come into my Twitch and support me and in the season four starting, please come on in, ask any questions. I love being able to talk to you guys, uh, do some theory crafting and what's going on, whatnot, and uh, talk about strategies of what I'm going to be doing for Endgame and all sorts of stuff with that. So yeah, that's all I have for you today. Have yourselves a wonderful uh, night, get some good sleep, and then tomorrow, let's blast. Let's get it done. Let's have a blast with this new uh, itemization thing and start enjoying the game we all love. That's all I got. Operator Otter, out.